Hello, my name is Morten Knudsen from Denmark. I'm a Microsoft MVP in security. And today I just want to uh, show a little bit about a solution that I have built. And I will publish this on my blog uh, very soon. And uh, the topic is about how to transition from the old HTTP a log collector API um, and moving into the new log ingestion API. I've been using custom logs for quite some time and I have uh, about 50 different scripts that are collecting different data and sending it in uh, through PowerShell scripts and sending it in through the old method. Microsoft has now a uh, um, announced a new way to do this which is being done and a little bit more complex because right now you have the endpoint and then you have a middle tier which is a data collection endpoint which uses a data collection rule and then it sends the data into the log analytics table so it is a little bit more complex uh, compared to the old method but it's a much more secure way and we have greater opportunity to also optimize the data being sent in but the complexity about this um, i have built in some automation uh, which consists of uh, 17 different PowerShell functions um, and I will be doing a demo now where I will be showing how I'm using these different functions. So for this demo I have created a little script which will uh, do some basic collection of data. So here you can see for example I have a sample uh, collection where I'm just collecting uh, defender antivirus and my goal for this is to upload this data including the schema uh, from this data and send it into log analytics using the new method. So what I need to do is that I need to create the table uh, which will be in the new format, the DCR format and I will also need to create the data collection rule or DCR. Beforehand I have already uh, configured a data collection endpoint so I'm not covering that in this demo here. So, But what I have right now is that I have a script which will uh, aggregate the data and then it will send in and my script will automatically detect that I don't have the proper schema set up in my DCR and the uh, table. So I will now kick off the script for the first demo here. This is a sim array, so I'm also converting the object into uh, an object and also removing some sim class data. I'm adding some more columns to the data, like collection time, um, the computer that I'm collecting it from. So now the first thing the script will detect is that I don't have the table set up. We will scroll through this. Uh, it will also detect that it does not have the DCR in place. And it will also set up some permissions and it will actually post the data into the new table. So if we go back here, it will go in and see if the table exists. It does not exist, so it's creating the table. It's also creating the DCR uh, here and it is also setting up 
some permissions under DCR, which enables my script to send in the data using Azure app. And if we go into the Log Analytics platform here, we should now be able to see the new table and we can also see here see this is a data from an old demo but uh, in a few minutes we will be able to see the data and uh, it will have the time uh, for for now and what we will see is the data will be coming in and we can see the different uh, columns and we can see the data uh, that are being sent in through this. So what's making up this is that I have a table and the table for this demo here is demo 1 and it consists of a schema. The schema we can see here we have uh, 65 uh, columns here and uh, we also have over on the data collection rule, we should also be able to see a data collection rule and we can go in here and we can see that the schema has been declared inside the DCR and it is being aggregated from the actual object that I'm sending in. So I'm not keeping any repository or anything. It's automatically detecting the structure of the data that are being sent in and it automatically creates it. It sets up also a transform KQL uh, which enables me to do some more optimization later on for cost purpose, for GDPR purpose, normalization purpose and it's sending in the data. So as this is running as a pipeline, it will take a few minutes before the initial uh, setup has been done and the pipeline, pipeline is responding and uh, we should soon be able to see, now we can see the data which has come in 10.39 which is the time right now and uh, three minutes ago and we can see all the data which is being sent in. So everything here is working perfectly. So the next example that I want to show is that <clears throat> when we have uh, in here in the table we have some columns which are being considered as standard com columns and if we go in and check the different columns, we can see here that we have some names up here like type, tenant ID, subscription ID, and so on. Furthermore, uh, it is not allowed to have an uh, underscore, uh, for example, as the first letter of a column. So it needs to be a character. Uh, which, are, which is the first letter of the column, like it is down here. So what I have also built is a mechanism which will go in and do some changing of the actual column that are being sent in. So I'm actually changing the source structure of the data. So for this demo purpose, I have here set up another collection of data so I will now go in and add some extra columns to this data and uh, we can just try to run this. <clears throat> so it is getting all the processes from my machine and we should now be able to see the different structure of this uh, data. And here we can see that we down here have three columns which will fail if they are being sent in. So this, col this column here starts with an underscore, which is not allowed. It needs to be a character. The word type and ID are also prohibited column names. So I need to make some changes around this. So what I have here is that I will now 
uh, actually run the script and down here you can see that I have a PowerShell uh, function which will validate the structure of my column and make the proper changes to the data and, and, and fix it up. So I will just let my script run uh, like normal and uh, this will this is a new um, table, a new DCR which needs to be created. So I will just run the script. Now it is checking to see if there are some uh, columns which needs to be changed in the schema. And now it's checking if it's uh, existing and it will come out and saying I cannot find this table and the DSR and it will create it automatically. So now it is setting up the table. That went fine. Now it's setting up the DCR and we should also see that will run fine. Now we just need for the security to kick in to see if everything is okay. <clears throat> so what we will now do a check here is that I will go over to my table and see if there is a new table which is called demo2 and it is here and if we go in and check the schema we will actually go down and we want to see id we can see here i have actually changed the column and added an underscore at the end of this if i go and find the noun we can see here i have stripped the first two uh, underscores away and if we go in and check the type I have also done a similar thing so now we just need to here we can see that the data was not sent in so that means that the the, the data cannot be sent in right now because of this delay that I'm talking about so I will just simulate to do another post and make and now we can see here that it is possible to send in the data and uh, we have now sent in 146 uh, lines of data and before we go in and check the data I just want to show you the same schema changes if we go in to the Azure monitor here going to the collection rule we go in and find the demo2 and we will check the schema is also made and here I'm looking for the ID you can see here I can see the noun which is here I can see the type which is down here um, let me find it here here we go so what we are now looking for is um, going in and seeing the, the, the data inside, the, uh, te in, inside Log Analytics. And I'm just going here to get the table name. Going into Log Analytics. Going into my logs. And I want to do a new, see if data is coming in. Uh, it's, let's just do some searching. It's still not come uh, in, so we'll just wait a few minutes here for it to come in. What we should see is that all the data has been uh, structured in this similar way, where you can see here ID and it has the, uh, the data. And we can see the uh, type, uh, which is down here. Uh, so that is uh, the 
uh, goal for this uh, demo it is to uh, to see this uh, change uh, of the actual data so that will come in a few minutes so the next demo that I want to show is that I now have um, uh, an, a, a DCR and one of the things that might typically happen is that I want to do some transformation and uh, the way that we modify that is by modifying the transfer of KQL. So if we start by going into the actual DCR, we can go into the Azure Monitor, going into the DCR and find the demo one. Oops. Here. And here we can go and check the if you notice I'm checking here and using a special API and it is very important because the transform KQL is a pretty new feature so you need to be using one of these two new APIs in order for you to show it. So if we go down here uh, to the bottom we should be able to see the transform and here we can see that it says source extend time generated now so one of the other functions that I have built is a new which uh, will update this. So here you can see that I prepared uh, a new uh, KQL uh, or Custo query and I will go in and, and run this. So it should now go in and update this query and if we'll close this down and go in and update it again go to the bottom and we can now see here the extend time uh, is has been added so let's say that I want to revert back to standard so I have prepared another function here which will uh, do this update but reset it back to the default and I can do uh, run this again and now we should be able to see that it's now back to the basic one and that has been changed here so that is an example of how you can modify an existing uh, dcr without changing anything about the schema and uh, the data destinations and, st and everything so it's just changing that particular uh, value. If you see, you, there's no GUI for doing this change, so this is why I'm doing it this way.